I'm Bamis Francisco. I'm here with Barry Silbert, CEO, founder of Second Market. Second Market is one of the leading platforms and marketplaces for trading illiquid assets, a lot of private company shares, toxic assets. I don't know, you have about eight or so different assets. Right. Let's talk about the private company shares, and you've been really active there. What happens when the IPO market opens up? So uh, the, the, the IPO market right now is kind of quiet, uh, and the expectation is that when it opens, it's probably going to be open to only companies of a certain size, so maybe a $500 million or more company profitable. And um, so when that happens, um, we're excited because it means that there's going to be more investors wanting to get involved in those companies before they go public. Uh, so we certainly expect a lot more demand to come in from, from buyers. Um, but in that scenario, you still have a lot of very exciting, interesting companies that are below 500 million that, that just can't go public. Um, mm -hmm. You know, the, 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 the numbers speak for themselves. It's now taking, on average, about 10 years for companies to go public. So what it means is um, between, you say about five years, so between years five and years 10, there's really no place for people to get in or people to get out. And mm -hmm. that's where second market uh, comes in. And who are the people coming in and buying? Are you seeing the companies that typically come in at the IPO level? Are they coming in now and buying and, and, and actively buying some of the stocks available on your marketplace? I wouldn't say actively buying. They're starting to, to dip their toes in. And who um, are these? These are the T. Rowe prices? Yeah, yeah, Franklin. the big public mutual fund companies, the T. Rowe's, the Fidelity, the Franklin's. Um, they're all very interested in getting involved in these companies, uh, but they just haven't had access before as a pre-IPO company. Uh, but really, the more active buyers tend to be uh, hedge funds and family offices and, um, and secondary direct funds and even high net worth investors as well. Who are the new ones coming in this year? Who are you seeing? We're seeing a lot of international investors, and so um, uh, you, both from, from Asia as well as Europe. Um, we're, we're seeing investors that want to get access to uh, these exciting companies like a Facebook or a, or a Twitter, and we're seeing a lot of interest from individuals. So, um, you know, both the average uh, retail investor as well as the, the sophisticated accredited investor. Now, unfortunately, um, you know, we're a regulated business, and we are not allowed to allow... Um, retail investors to come in. Yep. And so what's interesting is we're seeing uh, the formation of funds now that are geared toward retail investors to buy um, some of these companies. And so... Well, who uh, are those, some of those funds? Um, uh, the, 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 the funds don't have any particular name. They're, you know, they're a Facebook fund or a Zynga fund or a LinkedIn fund, and they're buying shares through second market. And so indirectly, retail investors are able to get involved in some of these companies now. Right. So you wouldn't want to open this up to a retail market? Retail as much market. as we would love to, because more liquidity is, is probably a good thing. Um, more regulation, probably. Well, the regulators won't even allow it. Um, so that's yeah. the distinction. Um, you know, once you register and go public is when you can bring in retail investors. Mm -hmm. Until you do that, it's only limited to what's called an accredited investor. Are you thinking of moving into new areas, for instance, um, sort of primary fundraising? We, we think that um, there's probably an opportunity for us a little further down the road to help companies raise capital. The first step is actually going to be companies that are um, working with us who are doing a secondary sale to also take in capital at the same time. So call it a bit of a kind of a stapled on transaction. Mm -hmm. But ultimately, um, you know, the network we've created of investors, they're just as happy to buy primary stock as they are secondary stock. But we definitely think that there is a place for investment bankers. We think that there's a place for placement agents. And we're looking a little further down the road to get involved in the primary financing side of things. Is that going to be sometime in 2010? 2011. Yes. 2011, yes. okay. Yes. And um, we'll tell you a little bit about your business model. You're doing about 10 transactions per month an average transaction size of, t size of $2 million, is that right? So uh, across all of our asset classes... Um, I mean, in the primary, okay, in, so in the uh, private company in, in, the, in the private marketplace, uh, we're doing um, well north of that right now. Um, in the first six weeks of this year, um, we did 50 transactions, uh, totaling $75 million. Oh, wow. In just the first six weeks of And the average transaction would be? Um, average transaction oh, okay. size is about $1.5 yep, million. Got dollars. It. Yeah. Okay. Um, and then where do you see that going this year? Each, each, each month, um, you, even each week, we're seeing more and more activity. So uh, we, last year we did $2 billion in transactions across all of our asset classes. And uh, you know, we're certainly looking to at least double that this year. 
across all. And what about for the private company shares? Is that doubling or? In, in the private company market, we did a hundred million dollars in all of 2009, and again, 75 million so far this year. So we're looking at some pretty big growth figures this year. Yeah. And then, as far as your business model in terms of taking the fee, is it a three percent fee of the transaction size that you take? So our transaction fee, um, it gets paid when the transaction is completed, and it's split between the buyer and seller. Mm -hmm. We do all the paperwork. We provide escrow. We make it really easy on the buyer and seller to get the transaction done. And it's free to access second market. There's no processing fees. There's no subscriber fees. You just pay when you get a transaction done. And did that model evolve, or did you always have a 3% fee, or did you, did you learn a few things and, and, and evolve to 3%? Well, it's actually interesting. Um, so the 3% the, the, the is probably an average for the private company, but depending on the size of the block, just depending on the level of liquidity, that, that fee could range anywhere from 2 to 4%. And um, so it has evolved over time. I would expect um, eventually it'll be but of a, more of a kind of a standardized pricing model. But, you know, we want to make sure transactions get done, even, that mean, even if that means that we don't get paid a lot on them. So we're very kind of flexible with, with pricing um, on all of our asset classes, private company in particular. Okay. Well, Barry, we wish you the best of luck. Thank you so much. I've been speaking with Barry Silbert. He's the CEO and founder of Second Market. I'm Bambi Francisco.